4.4 graphs of the secant and cosecant functions. If you'll recall, cosecant and secant are reciprocals of sine and cosine. So we're going to use that information to help us graph cosecant and secant. We're going to start with the graph of cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So because we know that, we're going to sketch the graph of the sine function. Let me first label the parts of our graph. Now that I've labeled the parts of the graph, let's remember what the sine function looks like. Sine starts at zero, at zero degrees or zero radians. And then at pi over two, it goes up to one. At pi, it goes back down to one. Three pi over two, it's at negative one. And at two pi, it's back to zero. And it's a smooth curve that looks like this. Okay, I'm gonna go backwards and do the same thing in the negative values and finish um, or continue the sine curve. It doesn't finish because it goes forever and so, um, all right, that's not very good. Um, so remember, it's smooth. It shouldn't have uh, pointy peaks and valleys. It should be curved like this. Okay, so this is the sine curve, which is not what we're graphing. We're supposed to be graphing its reciprocal. But I'm graphing it to show you how it's going to help us to graph cosecant. Now, just like in tangent, cosecant and secant both have asymptotes. And remember, an asymptote is just like a boundary that doesn't, uh, the graph doesn't cross. So in our cosecant function, or graph, every place that sine is zero, when we take the reciprocal of that, it's going to be undefined because we're going to have zero in the denominator. So each one of these places where we have zero for sine, that's where the asymptotes for our cosine function are going to be. Okay, so those are all the asymptotes. And then the actual graph of cosine is the reciprocal of sine, so it's going to look like this. Every place that um, we have asymptotes is going to get close to those asymptotes, and then it goes up to this point. So at pi over um, negative pi over 2, sine is negative 1. Well, the reciprocal of negative 1 is also negative 1. So it's going to have that same value. And then at positive pi over 2, um, sine is 1, so the reciprocal of 1 is 1. And it's going to go like that. And at 3 pi over 2, it's back down at negative 1. And this is what the graph of cosecant, the, the parent function, graph of cosecant looks like. So the yellow part was just to help us sketch our graph. We can take that away if you want to. And this is the graph of cosecant. Now some facts about the cosecant wave. The graph is discontinuous at values of x of the form x is equal to n times pi and it has vertical asymptotes at these values. The graph is symmetrical with respect to the origin so it's called an odd function. Again, that means if we were to flip it upside down, rotate it 180 degrees, it would look the same. There are no x-intercepts. The period is 360 or 2 pi, so it has the same period as its reciprocal function. And the domain is x such that x is not n times pi, so th those are the places where it doesn't exist, where n is any integer. The range is from negative infinity up to negative 1 union with 1 to infinity. So that part in the middle in the range it doesn't exist, the parts between negative 1 and positive 1, um, but from negative 1 up from negative infinity up to negative 1 and from positive 1 to positive infinity, that is where the range exists. Okay, so now we're going to look at secant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So just like we did whenever we graphed the sine graph, 
we're going to use cosine to help us graph the secant graph. So I'm going to mark up our graph. All right, so if we were to graph the cosine function on this graph, if you'll remember, cosine starts at 1 at 0 degrees or 0 radians, and then it goes down to 0 at pi over 2, and at pi it's at negative 1, at 3 pi over 2 it's back at 0, and then at 2 pi it goes back up to 1. So this is what the graph of cosine looks like. And if we finish it, or again, not finish it, continue it, it would look like this, or something like this. <laughs> okay, so all of the places where the graph touches zero, the reciprocal of zero is undefined. So that's where our asymptotes are gonna be for the secant function. And just like with cosecant, the places where the graph is at 1 or negative 1, that's where the actual function is going to touch its reciprocal um, graph. So secant looks very similar to cosecant, just like cosine and sine look similar. They're just shifted. All right, so that's... Again, just the red is what the secant graph looks like. The yellow is just to help us to draw it. And some facts about the secant wave. The graph is discontinuous at values of x of the form x is equal to 2n plus 1 times pi over 2. And at those places, it has asymptotes. The graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, so it's an even function. Again, that means if we were to fold it in half on the y-axis, it would match up. There are no x-intercepts, just like in the cosecant wave. The period is the same as sine, uh, sine, cosine, and cosecant. It's 360 or 2 pi. So now that we've learned all of the parent functions, just remember they all have a period of 360 degrees or 2 pi, except for tangent and cotangent. Tangent and cotangent have a period of pi or 180 degrees. The domain is x such that x is not equal to n times pi, where n is any integer, and the range is the same as the range for cosecant. It's from negative infinity to negative 1, unioned with 1 to infinity. Okay, so that's the parent, that's the parent function of secant, the parent function of cosecant. Now let's do some shifts to, or transformations or translations to the graphs. For the graph of cosecant, we have y is equal to 1 half cosecant of x plus pi over 2. All right, so let's, um, let's look at the different parts of the graph. If we talk about the amplitude, again, just like tangent and cotangent, we don't actually have an amplitude because we don't have a maximum and a minimum value, but we're going to use that because that's going to be the hills and the valleys of our graph. So the amplitude here is the absolute value of 1 half. The negative, so the 1 half is whatever our a is, and that's 1 half. Um, this negative tells us that it's reflected um, over the x-axis. There is no b, so our period is going to stay the same. Our period is still pi, and it has a phase shift of pi over 2. Um, since this is positive, our phase shift is actually going to be negative pi over 2. Alright, so because of the fact that we have a phase shift, we're going to have different quarters or different key points than we would in the regular graph. So let's um, figure out what those would be. Okay, if you'll remember, in our regular cosecant or sine graph, our key points are at 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. 
So if we shift it a negative pi over 2, that means we're going to take 0 and we're going to go to the left, pi over 2. So our new key points, we're going to move to the left, pi over 2, and then we go back to 0, pi over 2, pi through pi over 2, and that would be one complete period. So these are our actual key points. We just shifted over uh, one marker. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else we need? I think we got it all. All right, so let me mark up the graph. Okay, so just like we did before, let's use the reciprocal function to help us graph um, cosecant. So the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. Now, if we think about the regular sine graph, let me sketch that real quick. So the regular sine graph would start at zero and then it would go up to one and back down to pi. So this would be um, what the regular sine graph would look like. Now, our graph needs to be shifted over a negative pi over 2, so it would start at negative pi over 2, but it only goes up to 1 half and only down to negative 1 half like this. But another thing that happens is that it's reflected. So it reflects across the x-axis. So we need to have it flipped. It only goes down to negative 1 half. And then it goes back up, positive one half, goes back down to zero, and negative one half. Okay, so let me erase those ones that are not going to help us. Uh, let's see, there we go. All right, so this graph has been shifted. It's um, compressed. So it shifted to the left, it's compressed down to uh, an amplitude of one half. Um, and it's reflected across the x-axis. Okay, Oop. so let me continue it. If it were to go like this. Okay, so every place that it touches the x-axis, that's where our asymptotes are going to be. and then we can draw our actual graph. So again, where the asymptotes are, it gets close to it, but it doesn't touch it. It goes down to the sine graph and goes back up. And that's what our transformed cosecant graph looks like. All right, let's look at this graph of secant. Y is equal to negative two secant times one half X. All right, let's go through the different possible transformations to this graph. The amplitude of the graph is the absolute value of two. It's also reflected across the X axis. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so there is no phase shift, there's no vertical shift, um, but the period is changed. So the regular period for secant is 2 pi, 2 pi, and then we have to divide it by b. So our b is 1 half. So we can't divide by 1 half, we have to multiply by the reciprocal of 1 half, which would be 2. So we're going to multiply times 2. This is the period, and it's going to be 4. All right, so then remember to get each of the key points, we take our period and divide it by 4. Let me write it over here. So the, I'll write it down here. Key points. We 
we take our, this should be 4 pi, our new period and divide it by 4. And so we get pi. So we're going to start at 0 and then we add pi to it 4 times. Pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. So that would be our um, 5 marks to divide up our um, graph into the four sections or the four quarters. All right, so let me mark up the graph. Okay, I have our graph marked up and I'm going to sketch the graph of the reciprocal of secant, which is cosine. Cosine starts at the maximum value. In this case, it's going to be two because our amplitude is two instead of one. So we start at two and then at our first key point, we're going to go down to zero. At the next point, we go to negative two, zero, and positive two. Okay, so let's fill this in. So that would be one period, but I'm going to go ahead and complete the curve. Continue the curve. And every place that we, uh, the curve or the cosine function goes to zero, we're going to put in an asymptote. And then we draw our graph. And of course, you would only need to do two of these to make one complete period. So one facing up or opening up and one opening down would be uh, a complete period of the graph. But I'm just filling it in. And that's how we transform trig functions.